Yo, what's up? It's your boy XY. Today I'm gonna be showing y'all how to make old school R&B samples. Uh, sort of like in the style of Drake, Bryson Tiller, Gideon, you know, Summer Walker, you know those guys. So I'm gonna be showing y'all uh, my thought process. I'm gonna be giving y'all an in-depth explanation from the processing to you know how to how to go about making these type of loops. So anyway, yeah, let's get right into that. All right, so now I'm gonna be uh, explaining everything and the process. I'm gonna be starting from the grand piano all the way down to, you know, the perks and the plugs. So let me play you the sample. so I'm gonna start off with the first thing which is the piano grand piano that's the first part and then for the second part I did a little bit of a switch up Now for the piano, what I did is that um, I'm not going to go too in depth with the whole music theory stuff, but you know I utilized a lot of you know sevens and nights, and then for the end to sort of give the the progression a nice you know resolution, I did a, a sus a sustained chord, which you know it it adds a lot of like feeling and variety um, to the sample. As for the preset that I use, it is the Wing Upright Mono Dark in Keyscape. And for the processing, it's really simple. I did a uh, parametric EQ. I took out some of the loads and I panned the piano. Next, for the second part of the, the later part of the sample, I have this um, sort of sine wave-ish sort of thing playing in the background. When it comes to making like pads and sound and um, like laying like background textures, I don't like it when um, I play the exact same chords as say like the piano or the main element. So what I would normally do is that I would I would um, put inversions instead. So this is really simple music three, but let's take the C chord, C major. So instead of me just if the main piano is playing C E G, the C major chord, then uh, the pad in the background that I had would be playing um, the first inversion, which is E G C. Another way of playing the C chord. It adds way more variety to the uh, sample, and etc. As for the preset that I use for this, it is the Rhodes L A Custom Old Sampler in a uh, Keyscape. And for the processing, I added some automation with Shaper Box. I automated the um, the width, volume, filter, pan. If you want to copy those presets uh, and settings, you can you know pause it. Then I took out some of the lows and I added some clever, turned on the decay, uh, EQ'd the reverb at around like 200, 200, 200 hertz around there, and I uh, messed with the modulation a bit. Next is the thermi effects. Now, for the thermi effects, what I did is that I just grabbed like a basic sine wave. I ran it through the, the pitch shifting thing of the Therme toggle, is whatever you call it, and I um, put the init knob, well I, I, I set the init knob to pitch it up um, an octave, pitch it up an octave. For the thermi, what I like to do is that I would have like um, the same the chord progression like looping, and I and I'm messing like with the settings to like get get like that I, to get a certain sound that I want. So I would just have it playing until you know uh, I hear something cool, 
and then I would take different parts of like that audio file then I would just chop it up and make a chord progression well then I would chop it up and put it into the sample uh, let me show you the whole file so I would have like I'd have a really long recording and I would just chop up and put which pieces of the sample that which pieces of the um the recording I would like in the sample as for the processing, I didn't really do much other than EQ out some harsh frequencies and put some reverb. Next, I have a, a pad that I ran through the Thermi. Instead of using the pitch shift thing, toggle up the Thermi, I just use like the regular uh, uh, delay part of it. Now what I also did for this pad is that around this part where uh, this chord would play instead of letting the pad play that chord I let it sit on the last chord since this since I'm not gonna go too in depth like I said into the music theory part but this is a passing chord so instead of letting the pad play the passing chord I just uh, let the last chord leak in and then um, then I let the last chord, the chord before it leak in, and then it plays the um, the sustain chord, which you know resolves the sample really nicely. As for the processing, I really I didn't really do much post processing other than um, some automation. So I automated the width like I did for the other thermi thing, the filter. I put the cutoff to around like 590 hertz, 580. For the volume, I automated it. Uh, and like this sort of pattern thing and I did it and I clicked on the one quarter thing I added some reverb the same one as the last thing and I took out some lows and some um, harsh high frequencies next I have the vocals and the way that I did the vocals was that um, instead of singing one vocal line I would have several different vocal melodies singing at different parts to sort of complement the, um, the chord progression so let me play that for you so that when they play together it sort of like it sort of like makes a chord and for the second part i did like this like uh i layered like two vocals together to sort of um to sort of have like a segue into this run-up that i showed you previously this this like switch up because without the vocals, you know, it, it would be kind of um, empty. So I needed something to lead into the vocals, which is something that I think is, you know, important to do. You know, having contrast and um, in your... As for the processing on the vocals, I didn't really do much other than EQing Alter Boy and then doing some Shaper Box on, on this vocal, on these vocals here. I automated the filter, so uh, it cut off. It cut off a wrong hair. Next, I have um, the uh, Thermi effects, some like extra stuff that I have play in the background to fill some spaces. For um, track 10, it's just me um, palm muting my guitar and plucking, and then I ran it through the the, the delay part of the Thermi. For the Thermi guitar FX, um, I turned up the regen a lot, and I put like the LFP to sort of like halfway, 40% around there. So I got like this really long tail. Then for the reverse guitar, it isn't really like a guitar, but more like a pluck, but it sounds like a guitar. It's just a reverse kalimba pluck from my um, new one shot kit. And I just reversed it. Next, I have sort of like a, some extra, like weird thermi effect thingy things. 
it was just me like you know playing around I, I don't even remember what i was doing but i was playing around with like the pitch shift thing you know changing the the glide and etc the region and lfp and you know i came up with this and for the processing i just took out like some harsh frequencies as usual then for the last sort of uh thermi effect on this project is uh this sort of like the the tail end of of a random sound that i had playing on the thermi um when you turn up the region a lot the sound that you play has like a really long tail if you let it play out so then i took that tail and then i put it in certain parts of the sample to fill up some empty spaces Next, I have a sort of like ukulele run playing around um, bar three to five to sort of complement that passing chord. So this is the first um, melody. And then this is the second melody. And then this is the third melody that plays this this third melody this third melody melody is really important because it acts as sort of like a segue along with the passing chord into the resolving chord so it really it really complements the the sample you know it really it really gives movement to the sample as for the processing i didn't really do much other than eq and uh, reverb to take out as for the processing, I really didn't do much other than EQ and reverb to make it sound a bit more pleasing. Next, I have this um, accent that plays throughout the sample. It's a simple spring accent, and I didn't really do much for this other than other than cutting off the um, the attack time of it and automating it with Shaper Box. The same automation as the um, other elements in the sample. Then, in addition to that. I have this noise that I automated with Shaper Box again. I automated the volume so it sounded more like, uh, so it had a more rhythm to it. On top of that, I laid this pattern down. Now these sounds, I actually made them with the Thermi and these are also going to be included in my one shot kit that's going to be coming soon so you have this sort of uh accent thing then this reverse like bell thing i don't even know and then i extend i um took out the the winding up part of this and then i only had the the later part playing and then i also have this sort of like uh bell plug thing with delay then all together, they sound like this. Next, I have the bass guitar. Now for the bass guitar, what I did is that I tried to emulate the actual, um, how the, the feel and the sound of an actual bass. So, you know, I messed with the velocities a lot, you know, I did a lot of like uh, runs, like here. Since, you know, real bass players, you know, they don't really play, they don't play as static as, uh, as you would think that, you know, bass players, they play, you know, a lot more lively. And then I also did a, a sort of run here. As for the sound that I use for this, this is the Scarby Rickenbacker Bass um, Contact Bank. What I like to do with the Scarby, in fact, is that I would click on the amp and I would choose the um, 4x12 UK 70s settings. Then I would go to the tape, I would turn up the warmth and turn down the tone. But when you do that, it adds a lot of um, 
distortion to it so you would have to turn on the output so it wouldn't clip as much then in addition to that i put this amp on it called um cory wong and i turned on the treble and i turned up presence uh and i turned on the bass as well and i added some reverb to make it sound like it was more in a room because almost um, when you record bass you know it's like an amp in a room so I try to give it that sort of like feeling. Now the next element is some backing vocals that only play in the first part of the sample. Now for this, I just chopped chopped up like uh, an audio file of like me singing. So instead of like me having to like re-sing it, I just chopped it up, put it in Melodyne and um, automated the volume with Shaper Box so that it, so that it would like cut sort of like that with the so it would go along with the feeling of the sample and i didn't really do much processing on this other than um Alto boy and uh, some reverb next i have the plugs Now for the plugs, I actually made them myself. All these plugs, all these sounds are gonna be in my one shot kit that is coming soon, I promise. So I played like this simple melody line with the first plug. To sort of like, you know, going on, going along with like the um you know comp the theme, comparing and contrast. So I didn't really comp I didn't really, you know, play much of a complicated uh I didn't really do much of a complicated pattern in this since there were a lot of other elements. You know driving the sample i just wanted to have it as sort of like a background texture and then also i had these uh dream plugs also for my one shot kit i um sort of like did this reversing pattern thing so that it added like more more intensity at these parts because without you know without this uh this reversing plug it, it would sound it wouldn't sound as intense you know it's just it's just like a plug playing but when you have the reverse plugs you know it adds a bit more feeling to it and then finally the last thing that i have in the sample is just a, a high pitch vocal that plays at the beginning and the end of the sample and for this i didn't really do much processing other than um, reverb and delay and eqing some of the harsh frequencies anyway you know thanks for tuning in Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for supporting me. I'm about to dip. See y'all in a bit. Peace.